Hi everybody, this is Pramita here and again we are back to making the chunky journal uh, that we uh, that I had promised. Uh, I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I have started constructing the cover and I'm going to walk you through the entire process. I have prepped a few things ahead of time uh, just to make things a little bit easier, you know. Uh, so otherwise it, it, it's going to eat up a lot of uh, time. So uh, in the previous video, um, I have shown that how I have put all these pockets together and um, it has turned out to be pretty chunky like this. So I needed to construct a cover for this. So initially, as I said, I had not decided anything about the cover, but I have a um, finalized sort of thing and uh, I am going to, um, you know, uh, make the cover and uh, I have prepped a few things for the cover and I'm going to show you what I've done. So this is actually an envelope, something very similar to this, but this was a little smaller than my requirement and if certain, if certain uh, situation like this arises then what I do is I reinforce the spine so what I've done for the spine is I've taken this fabric and uh, then what I've done is I've layered it with lace lace fabric and I've quilt given it a quilted kind of look if you notice this very carefully you will obviously notice the diamond shaped quilting sort of thing that I've done so that this lace is not going to move or you know um, bunch up or anything of that sort when you're stitching your journal in uh, this is just to keep it stabilized nothing else and also one thing when you're adding a fabric spine you know it becomes a very pliable sort of um, journal so that's quite fun texture and uh, I, I like fabric spines basically so uh, whenever I have the chance I obviously um, you know add a fabric spine and many of my journals if you have been following many of my journals do have fabric spines so uh, what I've done is I've just stitched the fabric spine after I have sliced the envelope this was um, an envelope and what the speciality of this envelope is that it is a handmade paper it's made from handmade paper and it has this rugged kind of uh, leathery uh, feel to this. I have made quite a few journals out of this and it's very thick. It's like a leather leather kind of finish, you know. So, uh, if you stain it or if you, you know, if you do some kind of textured effect to it it will just resemble a leather leather uh, cover so that's one of the reasons why i like this um, texture envelopes but i don't think i have many left because it came it is a very you know very rare that we come across and you know envelopes made of handmade paper because you can get handmade paper very easily in india but um Envelopes out of handmade paper is not very prevalent. You will have to look for that. And now with the situation around us, um, I cannot go to the store. This is actually a huge bookstore. And they keep some office supplies in certain sections, some craft supplies also. So um, I used to visit that shop sometimes, you know, whenever we were going out or something. But um, now it's totally out of question. I am not visiting this shop at all. So I don't know if I'll be able to manage to get this online. I'll have to check um, and see if Amazon has this. I don't know. So anyways, long story short, I have uh, simply sliced this uh, envelope. Now I'm going to give you the measurement of this, but it doesn't make any sense because uh, you can tweak this to any size you have so this is around uh, 10 10 inches by 10 inches by 7 inches okay so this is a 10 by 7 uh, envelope and this is a fairly good size if you want to make mini journals this is a very good size then um, you'll have to cut down the papers according to your cover uh, which I have not done so 
um if i have not done something like this i will tweak the cover so that it accommodates the journal pages so what i've done is i've just added this as a spine and this will go in and this is the flap of the envelope now this generally closes on the inside okay but i have folded this on the outside and i'm going to show you why uh so the construction of the cover is not going to get finished in one uh, go it's going to take a while and i will uh, also show you the updates you know once i start working on it so I'll just do something so these are the tags they come in the kit you know the kit that i'm using uh, that's from my shop uh, it's called rustic roses and i will also show you how you can decorate the pages um and uh, you know it the uh, idea behind creating a very uh, basic uh, watercolor floral kit uh, was to you know tweak the creativity that lies in every one of us you know so uh, my kits might might look um, very blank very basic but that's what i wanted because i will show you how you can decorate the pages using you know labels uh you can use uh, numbers and uh, that that's going to be an ongoing process also i'll show you that so right now i'm just going to punch a hole okay so you don't need to do anything basically they come with the stitch effect also so but I, i have still stitched this i'll show tell you why because i'm going to do it as a flip um, kind of cover so um i'll walk you through the entire thing and then we'll start collaging okay so what i have in my mind is we'll keep this on the front okay so this is going to be the focal point but then i want this to flip over okay so if i want this to be flipped over i will be ha i will i must have a hinge which i have kept like this so this is actually this you know the tag has been stuck onto a thick cardstock and i've kept a small hinge which will go on the cover like this now i don't want this hinge to show so i'm obviously going to cover this part up but this is not going to be the one flip i want another flip that would go on this part so because this has a natural hinge because this was the a uh, lip of the envelope so uh, i can simply add one panel over here okay and this will go like this so when we are opening the journal i'll show you how they are going to look um okay i'm going to move the pages away so that there's little mess so what we what you'll see is sorry so what you will see is um these are some ideas that just you know i when i started this journal i have i had no idea how or what kind of cover i would want okay but as i worked along i I got the feel that I would like this on the cover and this on the cover and that's how I worked towards it you know like I I want this on the cover so I'm just going to show you the uh, how they are going to be aligned and then we are going to work through it so this is going to be the mechanism of the cover so you'll have this which will close up okay and then you'll have this tag which will close up so we'll have to do some collage over here and then we'll do some collage as well as add pockets over here probably add some pockets or do some collage over here and i'm going to add some pockets on this side also so now i hope this is making sense so i'll do some collage over here i'll add a pocket i'll do some collage over here add a pocket i'll do some collage here and i'm also going to add a pocket and then this will close up you'll have some collage over here you'll have 
probably you'll have a pocket and then this will close up and here I'm going to put a tie so that you know it looks like this on the cover but it's not actually a cover as such but it's going to be like this so I can add some other focal elements like some labels numbers and some stuff which I will do and then we you can see that in another uh, I mean in the next section so um, in the next section will be most probably a simple walkthrough and I'll only uh, show you some stuff which I want. So uh, this is just going to be, you know, no talking, only uh, collaging part because otherwise uh, it's going to eat up a lot of time. So I will be back in where I, where I show you how I do the collages and then we'll come back and do the rest. So uh, thank you, everybody. Hold on and we'll start on the collage. Hi everybody, so uh, I'm just uh, getting all the things together to do the, you know, the collage. So I have this paper in my stash. This is a kind of a thinnish kind of decoupage paper. And I'm just taking a bit off. And um, in the first part of the video, I have talked, uh, you know, how I'm going to put the cover together exactly. So these are some collage sheets that I recently bought. So these are also from Saturday Stamper. If you are interested, then I'll put a link to the shop below in the description box. But for that, you need to put the comment in the comment box. I'll check if anybody wants the uh, link. It's an Etsy store and I absolutely love her um, style. Uh, this was actually an ink saver pack, you know. And what I did, I stained it with Distress inks. So, again, if you want to see the technique, how you can do that, I'm more than happy to share that process with you. But, um, so this was actually the ink saver pack. And you can use these little bits and pieces that are on the cover, you know, sheet, uh, using them in your collages. And uh, trust me, I have been using her stuff for a few days, a uh, few I mean, a month or so now in my projects and they are so convenient and so lovely. But I, you know, I highly recommend this shop. So anyways, I'm digging into my scrap box just to see if I can layer the number up with something um, behind. But nothing is catching my fancy. Then, um, you know, I try and look harder. Uh, so... So I am just still digging in and I just got the scrap. This is also from my master board. So if you have not yet checked out the master boards that I have in my shops, uh, you can shop, you can uh, go and visit and see because they are very, very useful and uh, they have been designed in such a way so that, you know, uh, your collage stress becomes low. So if you are not very con confident with your collaging skills, you can definitely go for this. Again, I'm using these collage sheets. These are also from Saturday Stamper. Again, I will highly recommend this shop because, uh, um, the, uh, you know, the way she layers things up is totally up my alley. And Christine, uh, the owner of this shop knows this. And this is not a promotional video, guys. This is just my personal preference. I really like her stuff. And, um, um, personally, I have printed them out and they came out so nicely and I had no issues with any kind of stuff from her shop. So I'm just layering things up to see that ultimately what I would want, but that's not going to be the final effect. You will see. Uh, as I'm doing the voiceover, I am uh, thinking that, okay, so this is maybe this is what I want, but I'm not sure. So, um, um, I just am looking for my ink tools and I'm using walnut stain because I want the edges to be a little bit darker. So I am just um, inking the edges and, um, you know, I don't like straight edges. I usually, if I see or I feel that it's not going to be covered, I usually make it rag ragged <laughs> because that's what my preference is. And um, sometimes I do use a tearing ruler, but um, I think um, I can also use my hands to 
gives somewhat a you know torn edge effect so that's that and now i simply start gluing things up and trust me uh, you know uh, the way that i had laid them out uh, i will not do it that way it's totally you know that's what i Uh, feel comfortable with because I once I start layering things up, I just simply follow what I feel will be the best at that time. Uh, and if you give me some other time, uh, I will definitely change it. And you'll see how I keep shifting things up and moving things up and down. Only thing constant was these two pieces: the image, the floral image, and this music paper. and again i'm going to uh, see if i like this so probably uh, i'm going to take off that uh, grid paper also you'll see uh, and i'm going to layer that um over the number um thing that i have in mind but uh, you'll see i will not use that number uh, portion on on top over there because i felt too much of you know too much of dark colors and the same palette is being gathered over there so i want to break that monotony and again what i've said before collaging is just staggering things up at different heights they are of different dimensions and different backgrounds and that's what makes it interesting it's just to blend all these together nothing else so um as you can see i have just uh moved the number from the top in from the top to the middle of the page and now i'm trying to see where i can put that floral image because initially i had planned that i'm going to put it on the right hand corner um but now it seems that it's going to be too big so i'm going to place it over there also because i want something different i'll show you that when i finish collaging everything um so i am going to just um glue this on that corner and look immediately how it it the whole piece looks transformed and um yeah so probably i'm going to um so when i lay the tag you know um there will be this a little bit of peeking through that pink flower i will show you later on when i finish layering everything um so now what i'm trying to do is uh i need to do something to cover the long you know uh piece up so i'm going through those sampler sheets now the front sheet that you see with the butterfly that is actually called a sampler sheet now what she does is she gives these tiny bits and pieces that you can use in your collages and uh, they are more or less cohesive with one of her kits or two of her kits it's a cool idea and um and honestly i have been so happy with these sampler sheets and i'm not going to throw that bit away i'm going to keep it for my uh, you know if i need it somewhere so i'm going to try and put the specimen number something something but again i'm not happy with this because i already put down a number which is pretty big and i'm not i don't want to put any numbers as such so again i'm going through that sampler sheet and i took off that carte postel um you know uh word that that was there in the sheet and these sampler sheets are very a uh, clever idea and um, she really has this lovely lovely lo sampler sheets you get a bit of everything you know you get uh, a little bit of music page a little bit of butterfly image a little bit of uh, you know a uh, figure or something of that sort so again i'm trying to use that specimen number 270 but i don't know uh it isn't fitting into the picture you know according to me because it's too much of browns i don't want that so i need to fill that circle up so i'm just trying to see if i can use something uh, that bit up you know and i want something circular i don't want something um rectangular anymore so i am looking for something circular uh, which is going to stand out amidst all these so unfortunately i couldn't find something circular so um anyway i will go into that later on but right now i'm just using some labels these are botanical definitions that uh, miss tracy fox has in her shop so i i wanted a little bit of color 
So I've, I'm using this maroonish kind of deep red. Uh, this says herbaceous and I'm going to use that in the middle instead of that specimen number because you can see immediately you know there is a little bit of color over here and I need to fill that small um, space beside 74 um, you know and I'm going through the again the sampler sheet so I've decided to take off this small stamp seal sort of thing which says seal on this is a very uh, old stamp of Sri Lanka so um, I'm, I'll probably use this yes and I have just um, you know I'm not very fussy about when I'm cutting things up for collages so I'll just layer this up uh, I've put this down okay and I'm also going to ink this label up and use this and uh, trust me it instantly looks different you know it is not so bland anymore maybe I'm going to use a few more labels but uh, that's need to be seen I, I will see so I can put the label somewhere down below so I'm not sure so definitely I'm going to leave it at this right now 